Hi, I'm Jung Wan, one of the co-founders of Illicit, and I have something super cool to share with you today. We are launching Illicit Reports. Illicit Reports are built off of our systematic review engine, and they are designed to be the best summary of science on any topic. Systematic review is a process that experts follow when they are trying to rigorously summarize all of the academic literature out there. And now we've automated it so that we can make that process and these rigorous summaries of science much more accessible to you. We've actually had PhD level researchers evaluate illicit reports against all major competitors and other products out there. And illicit reports are significantly outperforming products like OpenAI's Deep Research and Perplexity's Deep Research, as well as many, many others. So today I'm gonna show you how it works. We're gonna go through one together. First, let's talk a little bit about who it's for. It's a research tool that focuses on summarizing the science. If there's a lot of research published and you're trying to summarize all the different findings or all the different studies, that's really what illicit reports do. People are using it for all types of things, like whether or not to get UV therapy or try different hair loss reduction treatments and understand the impact of microplastics. Professional and serious researchers are using it to understand how certain biomarkers behave in a specific disease. I think that's enough of an intro. Let's jump right in. Get a research report right here on the home page. We're going to start with a bad research question so I can show you how Alyssa can help you refine your research question. So I'm just going to start with something underdefined like um, effects of microplastics pregnancy. Let's talk about microplastics. So obviously this is not super clear. So Alyssa will suggest ways I can refine my research question. Um, I could try what are the effects of maternal exposure to microplastics on fetal development and pregnancy outcomes. So be a little bit more specific about the types of outcomes I'm looking for. This one asks more specifically about microplastic concentrations in blood and how that correlates to outcomes like preterm birth and low birth weight. This one looks at different socioeconomic populations and asks for a population focus. We're going to have these suggestions down here to help you refine your research question. It's a good space for reflection and helps you realize ways your question might be underspecified or other, th other elements you want to add to your research question. So I'll choose this one. Then I'm going to run it. Uh, and I'm given a choice of a few different options here. I can do the fastest version, which will screen the top 100 papers in our database and then summarize the findings of 10. I can do a balanced version, which screens the top 500 and summarizes the findings from 25. Or if I want something really comprehensive, I can screen the top 500 papers and summarize the findings from up to 40. So you can see there are a few different, I can trade off speed um, versus comprehensiveness. The way billing works, is uh, based on the number of papers you extract from, so the number of papers that are summarized in the final report. I'll just go with fast for the sake of the demo. And that's pretty much all I have to do. Alyssa is going to show me how it goes about answering my research question. The overall uh, process is going to follow is here. It's first going to collect all the papers, so it told me it was going to look at the top 100 most relevant ones. It's then going to screen my papers for relevance. It's going to generate a rubric or a bunch of screening criteria to de decide which papers are relevant for my query and which papers are not. It'll generate a bunch of data that it should extract from all of those papers to produce in the final report. You can hang out and watch the show. You can see all the different results are populating in right now, but we'll also just email you. It, the whole process should take less than 10 minutes, typically around five. So this is like moving a little bit faster than I can talk. Let's go back and I will uh, show you what's happening here. This is a gather paper step where Elicit first identifies the 100 most relevant papers in our database. This is using the same illicit search. It's, it's semantic. It's looking at title and abstract, looking at your query and finding papers that are most relevant. Next is the screening step. And here what Elicit did was look at my research question, which will always be here, by the way, if you never need to come to it, and figure out based on my research question, how should it decide which papers are relevant or not? So it generated these criteria. It looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six different criteria, and it's asking this question across all of the 100 papers. So Alyssa will use all these criteria to determine whether the paper should be included or not. And you can see here the different counts. So how many papers matched this criteria were able to say yes. Uh, it did examine maternal exposure to microplastics. This is maybe. So how many papers were like a little bit unclear. We didn't quite have enough information and how many papers clearly did not examine this. One of the biggest things that people worry about with AI tools is the black box nature of them and, and people, often, researchers are often concerned about why 
certain papers were included and others were not. And I'm really excited about how this can give you that transparency. Um, so I'm hoping this really addresses a lot of your concerns around transparency. Next is the data extraction step. So again, Alyssa automatically generated all of this information to get from the papers and include in the final report. You can see all of the detailed instructions here. Identify the specific type of study design used, look in the methods section, here's what you do if there's no information, here's some examples of the types of answers we're looking for, here's some formatting instructions. It's fairly detailed and all of this is automatically generated. Again, just based on your research question. And then the last part is just generating the report. The reason it actually takes as long as it does is because it takes a while to track down all of the quotes is going through every single claim in the report and making sure we can support it with quotes from the underlying text. It's, it's very important to us that every single AI generated claim be easily verifiable. Here we are. Here you can see the title of the report and kind of a one sentence summary. And then an abstract, which summarizes all of the different studies that we found and most directly tries to answer your question. All of these asterisks are where are links to the source quotes. So when you click on them, you'll see information from all the different papers that we found supported this claim. There's a method section. This method section just explains how search happened, how we screened it in, uh, how we screened in our papers and how we extracted all of the information. Next, you'll see a results section. And first you'll get an automatically generated table, fully, fully automatically generated uh, of all the different studies that we thought were relevant to your question based on the screening criteria and a quick summary of what they did just for you to get oriented around the different studies here. And again, everything is supported by quotes from the text. Then you'll see a discussion of the different studies. So we found that often when people do these systematic reviews, they want to find clusters and themes across all the different studies. So that's kind of what this says. That discussion continues, again, just trying to give you a sense of the themes found across all the papers. And then here we get into the actual outcome types, all the different effects, the effect sizes, the exposure level, even the biological mechanism. And again, you can click on any of these to find the relevant quotes from the text. We're trying to analyze this question from multiple different angles and really give you a rigorous summary of everything that's been published on the topic. Um, you could end with some really nice references. You can click into the references and see the papers um, in either plain text or PDF, depending on what we have access to or what you've uploaded. And you can always go directly to the uh, DOI or the publisher page of the paper if you need to. The same thing is true for any time you check the source quotes, you can just click directly into the title link there and access the full text of the paper. You can download the references. This was something that we got a lot of requests for into a bib file or a RIS file. And you can also chat with the paper. This whole report, if it's too long, um, you can just ask for a TLDR. But even cooler than that is you can actually chat with all of the underlying data. So if there's information that the report didn't cover, you can still figure that out. So we can ask something like, which finding is the most robust? And it'll tell us which one has the strongest statistical evidence, how it's supported by other studies. You can ask also for, for more information about a specific study, like, can you tell me more about what Chen et al. did? Chat is a great way to say, okay, now that I have this overview, let me just go paper by paper and understand what they did. Past chats will also be stored, so you can come back to any past chats. You can organize how you want to have chats and you can see the chat history. And then the other part that I really wanted to show you is the ability to edit all of this. So when we started, all you had to do was ask a research question and then you got this fully fledged report asking just one question. From here, you can actually go in and really make it your own, right? So you can go back to all of these steps, starting with the paper gathering step and add more papers from your library or you can upload PDFs directly here. You can go to the screening step and look at each of the individual screening criteria and change them or turn them on or off. You can go back to the overall judgments and decide, okay, actually I want to include or exclude some of these papers. We only looked at 10 papers. I actually want to look at the next 10 and include 20 in my report. You can go back and change that. You can look at all of the data that was extracted and say, oh, I also want information about uh, measurement approaches. You can just go and add, add that information here and then again, get it summarized across all the papers. Once you're done with the report, definitely feel free to share it. You can find sharing here and here. You can give people view only access. And when you do that, 
they will be able to see the whole report. They'll be able to click in and see all of the sources themselves, all the tables, all of the references. They'll be able to interact with it just like you can. If they have an illicit account, they'll be able to chat with it on their own. And obviously you won't be able to see each other's chats, but they'll be able to chat with it as well. They could actually go back and see all of the, all of the details, every single step used to generate the report, all of the underlying data, which I think is really cool and just goes a long way in making research a lot more reproducible. You can also invite people to collaborate on this report. Then you can edit it in real time. All of your reports are going to be saved here under recent. Even when the report is generating, you can navigate away, come back. It'll be in recent. So you can come back to watch the report continue to generate. And then you can also export in a bunch of different formats. You can download all the intermediate steps as CSVs. Let me just show you how to do that. So I'll do screening all of the individual sc screening criteria and whether the paper met that criteria and why you'll be able to see all of that. And you can download the report as a PDF or you can download the references of the report into a bib or RIS file. This is a PDF. So it has the full text of the report, all of the tables and the references at the bottom. Super easy to share. I would definitely recommend you sharing the link because it's much more interactive and people can see the underlying data, they can chat with it, they can see all the source quotes. But of course, if a P, you know, PDF is more common for you and, and your collaborators, it's super easy to do that too. So hopefully it's abundantly clear why this is completely different from all the other deep research tools. First of all, it's built for academic research and for academic research tools. It's not trying to help you figure out what to do with your taxes. It's only looking at high quality academic papers and it's following a, a process that the experts follow, which is a structured systematic review process. You can go back and check all of the intermediate steps and those intermediate steps make sense to you. A lot of the other deep research tools kind of do pretty crazy things. Like you actually have no idea why they are doing what they are doing or what they are doing. That's really important to us is making it this, showing you that this is a process that you can trust, that you can easily inspect and understand and then control. We automate everything by default for you to save you a lot of time. But if you really care about accuracy and control and you want something specific, it's very easy to then go back and say, I want to do things a little bit differently um, and take that control back. There's a lot of other features that other tools don't have, like the ability to chat with not just the report, but the underlying data and the whole like kind of richness of sharing this, um, I hope will be really exciting to you because we're excited about a world where science is reproducible by default, where all of this process and all of the underlying data is automatically shared and anyone can go in and see what were the steps that you took to get to this final result? What was the data that you considered? And finally, in true illicit fashion, Everything is obsessively cited. Every single claim has quotes from all of the underlying text supporting that. We care about this a lot. We have always cared about it. We have always done this more than anyone else has. And actually what we found is that a lot of the other tools are misattributing their sources because again, it's not a systematic process. I hope you can see what we really care about as we've built this, that systematicity, that transparency, being purpose-built for researchers. And I hope you can see why this is clearly different from all the other tools. And as a result, I hope it's way better for you than everything else out there. Thanks for watching. Enjoy trying it.